Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome to Celeste Tales. I just hijacked the intro from Tony. He is gonna <laughs> curse me out in just a few seconds. <laughs> take it away, ho take it away, Tony. Hey, welcome to Celeste Tales. It's your host, Tony, and I brought my reoccurring guest because I do like him, so Introdu now your reoccurring host who is one who is, as I said, taking over the podcast because I am amazing and I didn't honestly the reason I did this was because I knew I was gonna I was gonna fuck up the intro when you when you told me to when it was my turn to introduce yourself like I always do so I was like you know what let me let me do a preemptive strike on this <laughs> oh, oh why all right fine Mr. <laughs> Host what are we doing today well today you you told me that we were gonna make the the topic of today's uh, today's a little Quaint, quaint little little podcast that I have totally invented. It was all my idea, totally. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the feather. I mean, weather. Damn it! Cue cards messed up. No, I'm a fraud. Uh, yeah, you are a fraud because we were talking about uh, the music taste of today. Yes, music taste. Yeah, like, like. All right, man. You know, we all listen to metal, and I, for some reason, I just went back to bat metal, you know, where it used Metallica yeah. songs, and I was just... Oh, uh, yeah, classic. Classic. I was jamming out. Love it. Well, that, that's like the first one, right? I think like the, the second and third one, they use a different, um, a different uh, band or something. No. I, I know the third one, one uses... Metallica. Uh, mm. No, wasn't wasn't one of them? Uh, doesn't you one of them use Death Clock? Yes, like, they do. Yes, yeah. I think that. I, that's oh, the wait. Yeah, that's the one where they try to resurrect Joker. Yes, love it always. Yeah, that's the, that's my favorite one in my opinion. Right, it's because he's he's mastered it to the point to having a good third one, but it fits so yeah. well. I'll admit to this. But uh, yeah, just like like the I think the animation is just at its. Like visually in that in that episode, I think they go all out in that episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, you know what? We're here to talk about all types of music and what makes it feel good to us. So you know, since we're on the topic, you, you like metal, right? I absolutely love metal absolutely, with yeah, all no. of my heart and soul. It was a trick question. My soul made of it. metal, right? How was that a trick question? Because I knew you love metal, so it was a it was a trick question. Oh, all right, all right. Okay, I mean, why even ask the question at that point? Be it's a rhetorical question. It's like ah. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. But, okay. Anyways. Right. So you know, explain to me why would a person love metal? Can Can you do that? Well, for me per. Personally, I I am a person who has like can get enjoyment from every genre of music, you know, not just metal specifically. I'm not gonna be one of those people that just say like, oh, modern music is all trash. Yeah, understand. Not all of it, you know. There's always gonna be like a few here and there. Yeah. But to me personally, what I've what I've always you know like loved about metal was that uh, it it always felt like it had this like passion and emotion behind it you know it legitimately feels like someone is literally putting their all into into what they're doing with with metal it just feels like so like unique compared to like every other genre of music you know with um with most of the songs you know they they would usually do you know their lyrics about like the their kind of you know their personal lives or anything like that you know like they would base it off of real experiences and usually that comes to you know about like relationships or money or something yeah. like that you know Pop but with metal it can be literally anything there is such like a wide variety of like how what like you can make a song about and it's super surprising what people do with it like then we got shown there's so like many some... different examples i can pull up sorry I, what were you saying i was gonna be like an example where we shown like viking metal once i believe so right yes yeah there there's so many subgenres of metal that it's crazy you know like every every genre has like a million and one subgenres, but metal has like some really weird ones out there and i i enjoy most of them like did you know math metal was a thing there's math metal apparently what how i can just imagine it right now Oh my god. It's like subtraction! Multiplication! Subtraction! 
Give me that twelve um, do you, times. Do you have Do you have a specific favorite like genre of metal? Uh, no. I'm see. I'm a type of person because the reason I asked you on here today because we all love music here, right? I don't really have. Yeah. I'm not really picky. Yeah, all and, all two of us, right? That are here in the podcast right now. They don't know that. <laughs> but uh, my theory is. The more you like a specific genre, the more you don't kind of branch out. But the more you like everything, the less likely you are going to, you know, pick only... Uh, you're more likely to pick only a couple songs from each genre. So, I'm that person that likes everything. As long as it has, you know, meaning or a good beat, I'm okay with it. Uh, so, yeah, me, I. I personally believe that, like, you know, everyone has their own taste, but you can find something that appeals to you within every genre of music, you know, no matter what, what it is you like to listen to. Right. Um, you know, even with metal, like, I feel like um, I've met people that are like, they're like, oh, I can't listen to metal, it gives me headaches, you know, I completely understand that. Like, I feel the same way about dubstep, personally, no oh, offense yeah. to anyone who does like dubstep out there, but... but um. But there's such I'm a thing as soft I'm able to usually like metal. find a song where it's like, yeah, there there are metal songs that actually are very slow and actually very calm and relaxing, and I I know that's weird from a genre that's known for like screaming and like very heavy guitar riffs, hence the name, you know. But there is something that anyone can find enjoyment in, no matter what the type of genre that you want to listen to, you know. Right. Like, it's like I am. Per Sorry, you, you were going to say? I was going to be like, yeah, it's like finding a pop song that doesn't have any romantic um, connotations to it. Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm like I'm sure there's like a bunch of different examples that you can pull up like of, of songs that are like that. And, um, and like, with uh, with some, like, heavy metal, you know, like, there, there you can actually find, like, the opposite. Like, um, there's a million one songs that are actually very slow, very calm what yes. they do almost like ballads in a way yeah mm -hmm. and um i i actually remember seeing like this is probably gonna surprise you but there was a study that shows that was like to see how like a genre of what genre of music a person listens to how it affects like their mental state and their like emotional like standpoints and everything like that like how often do they get angry how often like how do they relax when it comes to a person who listens to this music type of music you know mm-hmm and they found that people who listen to classical music are actually, um, or, or rather, people who listen to heavy metal are just as gentle and calm as people who listen to classical music really? and vice versa. Yeah, yeah. And I thought that was crazy, but then I, then I thought about it and I was like, that makes a lot of sense. And you know why? I, I it, happen to guess. Let me take a guess. Is it because of the fact that it's more it it's it's in tune to their spirit and it's kind of like helping release what feelings they have? Probably, uh, but I would say it's because it's because heavy metal it actually takes a lot from classical music. Did right. you know that? Yeah, well, when you start having songs that are called ballads, I mean like you kind of you kind of get it. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, symphonic metal is a thing. Yeah, yeah. After all, remember? That's a good one. That's a good genre. Most people don't really. Yeah, I love, I love symphonic metal. Symphonic metal is great. Right, right, right. In fact, some of, some of my favorite, my favorite artists of all time, he is this one guy that, um, that he, he's called Mirror Throne. I don't think he does music anymore, but he's one of my favorite, like, black metal artists. And he combines, like, all this, like, all these, like, classical instruments to give his music, like, a very dark tone. Like, he does stuff like organs and violins and harps and everything. And things you would never see in a regular heavy metal band. And he does it all by himself. And I think that's, like, what amazed me most about, like, that one particular artist. That he just does all these different instruments that you would never expect to be in a song by himself. Right? Yeah. Yeah, I can um, behind that. Yeah. <laughs> Is I... Yeah. Um, and you know, like like going back to the whole like good music is out there. You just gotta find it. Thing. Um, I'm partial. I'm not very like into rap music. You know, I know that's a very popular genre right now. And but I I can see why people appreciate it. And 
I've even seen, um, I remember watching this like whole lecture where a guy was talking about like, what does it mean to love like rock and roll? And he says like, he says like rap is the successor to what rock and roll always was like fighting against authority, you know, authority figures and, and rebellion and all that. And and that makes a lot of sense because that's, you know, what rock is, you know, it was, it was was always that rebellious attitude and now rap kind of has that too yeah I can it's see it it's yeah like it's very in your face and everything and very unapologetic of what what it does just like early mm-hmm. early rock music because it's it's speaking to the, to the truth it's trying to be real with you. yeah yeah but i i yeah. will admit that you have to be careful because uh most people i would say they don't know how to label their music then sometimes it's because your labeling hasn't come out yet, like uh, electric swing. You 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 mm-hmm. heard of swing, and then when you start adding electric beats to it, it took a while until people can be like, oh yeah, that was electric, electro swing and stuff like that. So I feel like today people are like, oh yeah, I rap, but I'm like, do you do you really rap, or are you, are you just repeating words, or you know, because you have just like how you can write a rap song, you could you have to also come up from the top of your head. It's just like, you gotta be very careful with labeling today. Yeah, yeah. Well, at the same time, the thing is, labeling a genre of music can be very like tricky, because mm-hmm. a lot of a lot of the time, like a lot of genres can like bleed into each other, and one song can sound like it's this but like structurally it's actually this type of song you know i get you because that's um i would say that's how uh if you know drum and bass and dubstep that's how drum and bass and dubstep kind of work while they both do the bass stuff because of how structurally it is with the drums it's considered its own type of genre Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I'm. I'm not a musician. I'm not gonna pretend I know how like how how it works. But like, imagine if you're like someone who's who's in charge of that. Like you're writing a review for a band, you know. Oh, I and they come that. up with a song that no one else has heard of. How do you, how do how do you label it? You know. Right. And then that's where you kind of get free. You know. Like it's like imagine it sounds like completely different to all their other songs. How do you do you label it as like the same thing as everything else they've done? Or, but like it sounds completely different. So how would you even do that? Like imagine being the 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 guy who does that like but for like you're in charge of a band like Gorillas where every song is a dis- different genre and you're just like, "Oh shit, what is this going to be now?" <laughs> Just and I, I love the gorillas. That's yeah. like one of my favorite bands. Oh, I could say I'm with pride really that forward. most people, I would say gorillas has become a mainstream name because even people that don't listen to the gorillas know at least about the gorillas. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean, and it's crazy because like I don't think they've ever gotten like top of the charts in in anything. At no. least I don't remember. I'm. Sh- I think they got like nominated for a bunch of awards, but they've never won anything. Right, I hear you. And it's crazy. Right. Yeah, like but that's they're you... they're so popular, but like they've never gotten to like that high status. You know, they're right. still in a kind of a cult, like kind of a uh, kind of band. Right, and it's gotta be because classic. of the fact that some of their songs are just universally are being able to be used anywhere, like. Um, mm-hmm. If your song is able, like I would, let's point out a good song. If you, if you don't get hired to make a song and they go looking for a song, <laughs> it's it's very good if your song is upbeat or it has some type of way. Because let's use yeah. a movie trailer for an example. Like if I'm trying to get you hyped up for a movie, I'm gonna pick a very energetic, good song that. Um, Maybe not. Yeah, that reflects the tone of what you're trying to do. Right. So, bec- I would say the most for if I'm using Gorillas as the example, I would say the most iconic song of the Gorillas uh, was the. Sh- oh, now I can't remember the title, but it's the windmill one. You know what I'm talking about. Uh, El El Manana, or Feel Good Inc. Yeah, it's Feel Good Inc. I would say that would be one of their most iconic songs. 
for mainstream. Because if you ask a true Gorillaz fan, they will tell you something extremely different. But I think mainstream-wise, that's one of their good songs. Because it, it's like, it's upbeat. It has slow moments. It has like an evil laugh that you can use wherever. And it's it's very... It's very iconic for those good parts that yeah you can yeah it, it is one of those songs that like when i think of like the early 2000s music that's one of the songs i i think of yeah because it, it just i i don't know why i feel like to me personally it just radiates that like early 2000s energy yeah where everything was kind of maybe maybe it's because of its art style you know right true it'll be one of those songs because maybe it's because of the um, during the 2000s, everybody was going through a technological jump and all that stuff. It was just yeah. like high energy. It was in your face. And it was just like, we're going wild and out here. All right? Yeah. like, And that's crazy that we're, that we're going through like this kind of technological renaissance where everything is just constantly improving. improving. And, that's, and that's showing in music too, you know? There's all these like different genres. Right. that are becoming more and more popular and, like look at how k-pop is becoming more popular in america now you know like yeah. years ago that never would have been possible no especially since yeah uh, they have like it started to get remember gundam style and how that became like the biggest fad ever right. and then that little did we know that was the precursor to band to things like bts and everything becoming popular but if you really think about it it was it was because of the technological jumps that we've made yeah. like if you go if you go like autotune and japanese music which i don't remember which one came first but we we had the thing where you could alter your voice into like um i forget his name but you get the point and then we started listening to Japanese music when anime came over. And then it just started kind of taking the trend and you list if you don't listen to just shamisen music. And then, then we yeah, had yeah. Gangnam style. Like, I think like shows like Naruto can like be kind of like heavily like uh you know shows like Naruto and Death Note getting popular in the early 2000s, you know, that they can do. also kind of attribute to that in a way. You know, they got these young kids listening to Listen, like like me, you know. At the time, I was like, "Oh wow, this stuff, this stuff sounds awesome," but I have no idea what they're saying. saying right? Because and then it wasn't to, like, so search much, up more music like that. It was. It's kind of like now, because if you listen to, um, I'm just gonna say Spanish music. I know it's a wrong classification, but if you listen to Spanish music, nobody knows what the fudge they're saying at a party. It's just the feeling that you get from how well, the music Dad, is played. Uh, I, w I would argue that if you're playing, you know, that kind of music, it's probably because you, you know, you do like that kind of music. It's not like Japanese where it's like a very rare to know someone who, who doesn't know that language in America. You know, speaking Spanish is a very common language in America. Let's oh, be trust real me. Here. People uh, my, who... my whole family is Hispanic, you know, and... Right. and we, we we play that shit late whenever we get together, you know? Yeah, I get you. But do you understand it? Eh, hey, Macarena. Yes, I do, because I speak Spanish. You don't speak Spanish around me? How am I supposed to know? Uh, fucking gringo. Well, what do you mean? Are you, are you, you about to call Spanish? me a gringo? <laughs> <laughs> this is the thing. It's like, what do you mean you speak Spanish? <laughs> well, like, yeah, it's like, why Why would we? Because we both know each other as, like, English speakers. So, like, we've never had a reason that we need to speak Spanish. This is also true. I'll give you that. But, uh, back to... We're, we're not... We're, I, don't, I, I think it's also because we're not the type of people who would, like, talk behind another person's back. So we're never going to do that thing where, like, we're like, it's like, hey, look at this gringo over here. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's, 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 it's like, no, we're never going to do that. So no, it never really happened. That's fine. Uh, but uh, let me think. So uh, what do you think? Well, what do you think about music nowadays? This is going to be the music for the next generation, right? Uh, the, all the popular songs. Let's, let me point that out. Let me give you a narrower. Let me narrow it down. All the popular songs of today, if you've listened to them, what do you think? Uh, that's tough because um, as someone, like I said, I like I can find appreciation for like every genre of music. 
And I don't consider myself to be a big critic because I don't really know that much about it. But I know I like what I like, you know? And I can find some stuff I appreciate in, you know, whatever comes out. Like, whatever comes out on the radio, like, sometimes I'm like, oh... I'll be like, no, this is this is my thing. Right. But the more I listen to it, then I'll be like, you know, I can get into this. And then there are other times where it's just like, God, this song is terrible, but I can't turn it off. Right. My my reasoning for asking that question is because I've noticed that because most people want money nowadays, that they they're using those you know ad techniques that they used on kids, you know, the it has to have color, it has to be repetitive and stuff like that. I see they're using it more in the songs of today, the really mainstream songs, where it's just, mm-hmm. there's each, like, the chorus makes sense because it's the chorus. That really shouldn't change too much. But if your main song tends to kind of just be repetitive or doesn't change at all beat wise yeah it's kind of like you're just you're just at your this is your repetition song to gain money maybe you're using it to get your name out and that could be considered fine but if your name is already out you're just repeat this kind of i i want to protect the next generation and give them a taste of music that is not just made for the money yeah I mean, music is always going to be made for the money. Yeah, I'll give you that. That's, but... that's why they do it as a job, you know? Like, yeah, it's... Yeah. <laughs> I mean, every everyone who does music does it because they enjoy it, you know? But it is also a job, you know? It's a 50-50 split, you know? Yeah, I'll give you that. Yeah. There, there's there's going to be someone who's just like, free concert, you know, just because they love doing music. I mean, they don't have a... A good chance of doing it, but yeah, I can see people doing it. Uh, if, please show me, please show me the band. I I will. I never said they would be popular. I'm life. just saying, like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but yeah, I can see where you're coming from, but I'm not one of those people that says you know all the music of today sucks. You know, well, it's I don't the music industry, contrary to what a lot of people think, is not stagnating. You know. Oh yeah. I, I disagree with that. Yeah, I, don't, I never. We. I was trying to say like I agree with you. I didn't. I didn't say all music was like that. I'm just saying certain music. No, no, no. I. Because yeah. it's a very popular thing that comes up. You know. Yeah. Like all oh, all oh, these damn kids today and their their music is that that's always gonna be a thing. People were saying it in the '90s. People were didn't like. People, people who were born in the '80s didn't like music in the 2000s. People who were born in the '70s didn't like '80s music, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, you know. Right, right, right. It is and when it, co- I was but just gonna... I, but I do agree that like yeah, that some things can get repetitive. You know, like the the song about the you know your regular old breakup sound, song yeah. about a boy, song about a, this thing, this thing. It's gonna be in every genre. Let's be real here. Mm-hmm. Just like how there's every American every. Boy dance. Yeah, just like how every movie is going to have, you know, their cliches, you know? Even metal is going to have, like, oh, there's always going to be this guy that's, like, talking about fighting back, rising up, you know, those, those kind of songs. Right. I understand. Everyone kind of understands. It's just how it is. But, uh, you know, since we're on that topic of concerts, have you you went to a concert before, right? Have you? Yes. Yes, I have. You know, you know it's kind of... I have been to one concert and I I will tell you my story all right I I I won't tell you which concert because I fear for the backlash I might get but people know and uh, it's it was just because I didn't I didn't like too many of his songs well it's not I didn't like it but it wasn't my cup of thing and I just fell mm-hmm. asleep and I was like oh <laughs> Fell asleep at a concert. Only me would do that. You fell asleep at a concert. Only me. Oh, I can tell you right now. No one else falls asleep at a concert. Only me. I I, I do have a funny story when it comes to my first concert. Uh, I, I think I was like 12 or 13 at the time. And on Christmas Day, my mother just hands me like two tickets to a Bon Jovi concert. And I was just... 
And the thing is, I, I like old music. I don't have. I like Bon Jovi. They're all right. They're not my favorite band, you yeah, know. Yeah. But I don't hate them, you know. I still I enjoy their music to to a degree, you know. Yeah. They're a classic. But going to a concert with your own mother is isn't exactly like the coolest thing to do. <laughs> I would. I would Her say. Mother, I was gonna be like, if I I can understand if you go to. Maybe, like, somewhere you're supposed to be chilling, like Jazz in the Gardens or something like that. That would make sense. But uh, a concert like that, it's kind of weird, don't you think? Yeah, and and it was crazy because, like, cause, like I, I've always been a kid that, like, grew up with, like, rock music and everything. Like, old rock music, like Journey and Def Leppard and Speedwagon yeah. and all that. And... I was happy to go. I was even excited, you know, because like I like Bon Jovi, and I, even even on the way, like I was telling my cousins about it, and they they were just, just like, "John, you're going to a cousin concert? Nice. Who are you, uh, are you going with? Your friends or anything like that? You bringing a girl with you?" And then I'm just like, "No, my mom's taking me. Oh, she's gonna like drop you off, and you're gonna meet up with your friends there, right?" No. And I remember him literally pausing for a second, just being like, "You're you're going to concert with your mom, dude? That's so lame." I don't think it's that lame. If you it's both, it's pretty it's pretty lame. I don't know if your mom is a party animal, you're a party animal. I can kind of see where the party animals just party animaling. Right, it makes the thing is, we we were not we were not we sat we were sitting down the entire time. Oh. Yeah, and, I, I take and, that back. And that to be funny. honest, and to be honest, I, I like concerts in like the first few, but after a while, I'm just like, I'm just like, when does this end? Can I go home now? Right, because like, you even have if to... it's a band, I'm like, I, I, I do feel like I could have the same experience just sitting at home and listening on on my phone. You know, like I could. I, I'm not. I'm not a big concert person. Is what I'm trying to say. You know, maybe maybe it's because I'm I. I wasn't with friends at the time, but like I um Yeah, you weren't with your hype I, gang. Yeah, I wasn't I wasn't the one that's hyped. Right. Yeah. I would suggest if you're gonna have a first concert, ladies and gentlemen, you know, it doesn't have to be a grand old time. It doesn't have to be like a mega superstar. It can be a nice band that you love to listen to. Doesn't matter who you take, as long as they're able to kind of give you that hype vibe. Be like, yeah, we're going to this concert. We're going to listen. And yeah. then when you get there, you all at, have a nice time. You get out your seat. At the end of the party. day, I would. At the end of the day, I would like to preface, you know, like, you should be okay with, like, liking whatever you like, you know? Right. It doesn't matter if it's not popular or even, even if it is, you know, if someone is going to be like, Ah, uh, everyone listens to that, you know, like, and just enjoy what you want to listen to. Music is an art. It's literally for everyone, and there's something for everyone, and no one can take that away from you. Nope. It's just And you. no one should take that away from and you. you know? It's Keys. it's what brings us together. It should not divide us. Right? If you love the Ivory Keys... Because that, 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 that was me a lot of the time in, in high school and middle school. I was looked at, like, as the weird kid because I listened to, like, death metal and shit like that. Right, I can I can understand that. Right now, I'm into like internet music, things you find off the internet. It's, it's no big. Oh yeah. People look at you weird you, though, because they're like. You can find a ton of <laughs> ton of great indie indie artists out there. Not even that, like just the people who who like want to sing covers on their YouTube channel are pretty good, are amazing sometimes, right? you know. Oh yeah, because they give you that different take on how the song would be done, and all. yeah, I gotta yeah. gotta be impressed with that. But exactly. But as even if you listen to the ivory keys or that brass sound, maybe you like to hear the percussion going. We here appreciate all types of music. It's what brings us together, like John said, and it's what keeps us going. It's the inspiration yeah. we all take. I will admit to, to that. To to quote the great American. Uh, American epic that is the show Phineas and Ferb. Music is forever. It brings us together, and I owe my life to rock and roll. <laughs> 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 rock.
Rock and roll. Have you... <laughs> rock and roll. Good night, tri-state area. All right. Well, uh, have you? Wait, wait. Say it again. No, sorry. I, I was gonna like bring up if you've heard of um, if you've heard that one parody song by Bo Burnham that just makes one of everything about like modern music that is just like like for example uh it, it was like he's supposed to be like a pop singer that's making fun of like modern lyrics how they're just like i love your hair i love your name i love the way you say it i love your eyes and how they're the bluish greenish brownish color i love your arm how you how you how your torso has an arm on either side and i love love the fact that you have hair on top of your head no but i want you just to, to like appeal that. to everybody i need you to send me that that sounds amazing it's great. I'll send it to you. All right. Halfway well, through the song, it starts becoming like, like it starts getting dark, and he's just like, and, and he's just like, hey, if you're my agent, you're probably saying, oh no, sound the alarms. You're not appealing to little girls that don't have arms. Well, they can't buy Spotify anyway, so fuck them. Who needs them? <laughs> it's like Jesus, but it's kind of true, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, but that's about as much time as we have today, guys. Uh, so thank you so much for listening, because you can't see this. I mean, unless you're on YouTube, you're just going to be looking at an image. But thanks so much for listening. It's been your host, Tony, from Celeste Tales, with my special guest. John Rock On Dudes. John Rock On Dudes. Remember, he was your host for today's episode. And every single one of our one of our subscribers just cringed and unsubscribed. Oh, it's a good it's a good number. Uh, I I rather keep that number. But uh, <laughs> no, 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 unsubscribe now. Go listen to a better podcast. No, <laughs> we bring you the no. good stuff. Please <laughs> remember the robot episode. That was a good one. <laughs> yeah, that was a good episode. Yeah. Well, uh, see you later, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>